Zondervan has come out with a new page design for some of their Bibles, and they call it the Passaggio setting, as you can see here. This Bible that we're looking at is one of the Passaggio setting Bibles. It is the Heritage Bible. They also have it, I believe, in a thin line edition, and they also have the Passaggio setting in the NASB. But we're looking here at an NIV Bible, the New International Version. And it says here a little bit about the Passaggio setting, elegantly uniting single and double columns into one Passaggio setting Bible design. So the idea here is you're gonna see both single columns and double columns in this Bible. And when you look at the back of the box here, you'll see a little bit of an explanation on the back as to what Passaggio means, why they use that term. It says, Passaggio setting Bibles elegantly shift between the visual beauty and clarity of a highly readable single column text for prose and a clean double column text for poetry. The term Passaggio comes from the world of classical singing, describing the shift a performer makes between vocal registers. Vocalists who can skillfully move from one register to another have mastered Passaggio singing. Bibles that can skillfully move from single column to double column are in Passaggio setting. So they're saying here that this Bible skillfully moves from single column to double column, which you will see when we look inside this Bible, and they're relating it to the musical term Passaggio. By the way, Scott Shirley has a review on his channel of the Passaggio NESB. I highly re recommend that you check out that review. He did a really good job, as he always does with his reviews, but I love the way he introduced his video talking about the word Passaggio. You've got to see that, and I would uh, nominate Scott Shirley as uh, someone who should be a marketing consultant for Zondervan in light of what he's doing uh, and, and the way that he creatively started out his video. I thought it was hilarious. So thank you, Scott Shirley, for that. But this gives you a look at some of the features here. One thing that really sticks out and is great, even though this is more of a mid-range Bible, not super expensive, it has 36 GSM premium European Bible paper. So when they chose what to put the expense on in this Bible, what they chose to spend money on with this Bible was the paper, which I think is really worth it. And you're getting a little bit of a glimpse here as to what the setting looks like. We'll look at that more when we get inside the Bible. It is also a 10-point font, and this is in the brown leather soft. They do have other cover options available depending on what you're looking for. And then here it says that it retails for $70 for the brown leather soft cover. You can get that cheaper on Christian Book and Amazon.com. I will leave links to those so that you can purchase this Bible. The box that it comes in for this edition is a clamshell box. It's uh, not really a thick box, but it's nice looking. And the clamshell design I really like because of its ease of use. You can easily get the Bible in and out of there and it protects the Bible when you're storing it. So I will say, because this is a new setting, um, you know, anytime you do something new, uh, it's easy to kind of have that gut reaction to like, oh, I don't know if I like it because it's different. But uh, there are things I definitely really like about this Bible. And as far as the Passaggio setting, uh, overall, I think I, I like it better than I maybe thought I would. So we'll take a look at that. But what I really like, I think their leather soft looks very nice. It's a kind of a thinner material, pretty flexible. It is a paste down liner. And this, the spine has a very nice design to it. This has a brown and gold color scheme. So you see that with the angle cut ribbons here. I believe double-sided satin. So Zondervan has been doing a great job with their ribbons, and they continue that here with this Bible. It does have gold gilding on the page edges, but it's kind of a dull gold. I think Scott Shirley also mentioned this, and I, I would prefer more of a brighter gold, but for some reason on some of their Bibles, you will see that dull kind of gilding. And then it does also have a gilt line around the edge of the page. You also see here a little emblem 
on the end sheet. So I like the color scheme. I like the look of the cover. I really like the look of these pages at the front. The presentation page and the family records pages look really nice. And on the inside of the Bible, you have a gold and dark blue color scheme, which looks magnificent in my opinion. What I like about this Bible is they really are just tweaking things, um, really making some little changes like the color scheme here that really looks quite nice. Now, the only downside, the gold doesn't necessarily come out real strong, uh, but that dark blue comes out very boldly. I really like that, but I do like the color scheme. And actually, it's pretty cool. When I graduated from high school, the, my high school had this same color scheme. And also, the, the school that my kids go to, it's a Christian school, they have this same gold and dark blue color scheme. So kind of kind of a personal thing for me there. So here is another title page for the publisher. And then you have the copyright information. You can see this one is this year, 2021, printed in China. This is the NIV. It is the 2011 edition, of course. They all are now. And uh, here's the table of contents. You get all the books of the Bible there. You do see uh, some of the back matter there, which you will see in some of the Zondervan Bibles, some really good helps in the back there. But I like at the front here, they do talk a little bit more about the Passaggio setting. And this is kind of where they make a case for why they designed it the way that they did. And if you want to read this whole thing, pause the video and read that, feel free to do that. It does say here, though, that the prose sections that are set in single columns are designed to be read easily like a novel. While most Bibles are set in two columns to preserve space, this single column design should be familiar to readers who are used to reading prose in book formats, making the Bible's prose text format familiar and comfortable. And then in the next paragraph, it says, the poetry sections that are set in double columns bring a compact crispness to the reading of this literary text. Translators closely focus on the formats of poetry sections to convey meaning. Setting biblical poetry in two columns clearly communicates this formatting in the best possible way. But I think ultimately, uh, from what I have read, this was not only a way to make it very readable, but to save space. And we will see how that ended up coming out when we look at it. But here is the preface to the New International Version. Then when we get into the Old Testament, again, you see here a gold color scheme for the Old Testament title page. The book title is in that dark blue print, and the biblical text itself is in that dark blue print. It's so dark, by the way, that not everybody can tell that it is dark blue when you first look at it. But if you compare it to black print, I think you will see it is a dark blue. And there you see that it is also in this section in a single column format in that 10 point comfort print font. But when you see poetry in this Bible and you see that on the next page, you see it switches to a double column format. Now this is where I'm a little bit uh, not super enthused about this format just because I like poetry to be, I would say if I had to choose, maybe in a single column format. And so it would kind of be nice just to have it all in single column. But I can kind of see what they were trying to do with this. It's just that when you only have a small portion of poetry, it kind of looks a little strange the way it's divided up. So you see that a little bit here on these pages. But when you look in the middle of the Bible and you get to the book of Psalms, for example, you can see the poetry actually looks you know, pretty nice. I mean, I know a lot of people do prefer single column format for poetry, but I still think it looks really nice and it does save space, I think is what they were really going for there. And as far as the reading experience, you can still read poetry pretty well in a double column format. Um, but whenever you're in prose, you will see a single column format. The verse numbers are there and pretty easy to pick out. It also has translator notes on the bottom. 
And the page numbers are on the bottom outside corners. And then it also has references in a vertical fashion on the sides of the page there to tell you where you're at in the Bible. So a very unique setting. It is really pretty. I actually think visually it is quite appealing overall. It's just in some sections where you're going back and forth, it can be a little weird to go from a double column to a single column, back to a double column. I think, yeah, you could get used to it, but it's just something a little bit unusual. But, you know, we'll see as people use these Bibles how they really feel when they are using them on a regular basis, if it's something that they find to be uh, uh, hard to get used to or if it's something that they actually really enjoy. But just off the bat, I would say, Overall, it looks really good, except in a few places where maybe it goes back and forth a lot, or where the poetry is just a really short section of poetry in a prose section. So I don't want to be too negative about it. Like I said, when there's something different, it's easy to react negatively, but I think it actually does uh, look really good. And the size of the Bible, I have to say, is one of my favorite sizes. This is, this is kind of in that Goldilocks range Bible size that I talk about. Uh, very easy to hold, but a good size font. Even has good margin space. And that is 36 GSM European Bible paper. So I'm really impressed with that in a Bible that is quite affordable. It is line match text. The print here uh, doesn't have a lot of show through. I don't find that to be too much of a problem. At the end of the Old Testament, getting into the New Testament, they have the New Testament title page, again with that gold font. And then the book of Matthew. So again, you see here going back and forth between single and double column. When we get to the end of the Bible you'll see those helps that we talked about in the table of contents section. So you got your table of weights and measures. You have the miracles of Jesus, parables of Jesus, perspectives from the Bible, prayers of the Bible, promises from the Bible. And I've seen those in some of the NASB from Zondervan too. But they also have a nice reading plan here. To help you read through the Bible. And then after the reading plan, you have the Zondervan maps. And uh, they're on glossy cardstock paper. I know that doesn't make everybody happy, but they do look really nice. They're very bright, very nicely printed. Then your end sheet and the paste down liner in the back here. Again, it's a really, really nice looking Bible. So the one other thing I wanted to do in looking at this is just uh, kind of assess how do they do with saving space. It is very, a really nice, easy to hold, easy to carry Bible with a good size font. I am gonna compare it though to a CSB single column format. Now this is a single column, I think it's large print personal size is what it's called. It's just actually called the single column personal size Bible. But uh, you can see here it's single column in prose, but it is also single column in poetry. And when you compare, you will see that the NIV from Zondervan is saving space there. There's a lot more white space on the pages in the poetry sections of this single column Bible. But you can see why so many people like poetry in single column format. It just really does have a nice look to it to get the whole line of poetry on one line there, or most of the line of poetry at least on one line there. But when I actually compare these two Bible sizes, you can see, I mean, in terms of their footprint, they're very similar. But you know what? Even in terms of their thickness, they're not that much different. Uh, and I counted, I think it's around 160. 160 pages more in this Bible, right around there. So from a consumer standpoint, you're really not saving that much space. Um, they're not that much different in terms of their size. So to me, that kind of um, takes away a little bit from 
the idea of the Passaggio and why you need this setting. But that being said, they did such a good job with the, uh, the quality of material, the paper especially, and the printing of this. And, you know, I do think it looks really nice. It's certainly a very, very usable Bible. You could definitely use this for study, for teaching. You have some space in the margins for note-taking. And really for less than $70, you can probably get this somewhere in the $50 range, 50 something dollars maybe for this Bible. Uh, for mid-range Bibles, this is really nice. So that's a overview and look at this NIV Heritage Bible in the Passaggio setting. If you have any other questions or comments about this Bible, feel free to leave that in the comment section below. But thank you so much for taking a look at this Bible with me from a fresh perspective.